Netflix has a problem, one I think we'd all like to have. They've become too successful. For 20 years, the company's goal has been to get more subscribers, and they were great at it. In 2020, they had more than 200 million. But the problem is Netflix can't build a business on new subscribers forever because eventually there won't be many new people left to subscribe. So where does Netflix go from here? Well, CEO Reed Hastings has a plan. His focus has moved away from finding new subscribers to getting existing users to stream for longer. Hours per subscriber per month is their new measure of success. Which might seem innocent enough until you hear they've declared war on sleep. Netflix is competing with, wait for it, sleep. The CEO actually told investors, we're competing with sleep. It's a very large pool of time. How does a brand beat sleep? Well, I've uncovered a few psychology and behavioral science principles at work that I think can give us a clue. But before we talk about the tactics Netflix uses to keep people watching, let's talk about the first barrier. And that's when users can't find something to watch. Now, Netflix has tons of great content, almost 50,000 shows and movies, but that many options can be a double-edged sword. So on one hand, that amount of choice is part of Netflix appeal. It's why people join. They want more things to watch. But the problem is, research tells us that too much choice can be a real problem when it comes to deciding on something to watch or buy. It's a principle called choice overload. Now this concept can be illustrated by a famous study about selling jam. A research team from Columbia University set up a booth of jam samples in a store. Every few hours they would switch from a display of 24 jams, a lot, to a group of six jams, not so many. When there were lots of jams, more people would stop to get a sample, but only about 3% of those customers would buy a jar. When there were only six jars available, fewer people stopped to look. Of the people that stopped to look, 30% of them bought jam. In other words, lots of options attracted customers to browse, but fewer choices got them to buy. So what does selling jam have to do with watching movies? Well, Netflix knows it needs to land the size of its library to attract customers, but then it has to help narrow down those choices enough that users can quickly decide what to watch. You can't stream for longer if you never start streaming in the first place. So that's our first lesson, avoid choice overload. If there's too much choice, you'll attract people to browse, but you'll never get them to commit to buying a product or streaming a film. How did Netflix get so successful that their only rivals are themselves and sleep? And now that they're at war with nap time, how do they plan to win? Welcome to another Brand Psychology Masterclass brought to you by Choice Hacking. If you're new to this channel, my name is Jen Kleinhens. I'm an author and a behavior change strategist. I like to uncover the hidden psychology behind how the world's biggest brands became so successful and turn those discoveries into lessons that anyone can apply. In this video, we're going to break down a few of the ways Netflix used psychology to become the world's biggest streaming platform. So let's get started. If Netflix wants users to stream longer, there's basically three ways to do that. Number one, as we just discussed, they have to narrow down a user's options so they'll be able to pick something to watch. Second, Netflix has to show the right content at the right time for the right user. And last, they have to present that content in a way that makes you start watching and keep watching. So let's talk about how Netflix uses psychology to show users the right content at the right time. They do it by personalizing their experience. Why? It's down to a behavioral science principle called the cocktail party effect. It was coined by cognitive scientist Colin Cherry, and he discovered our brains can tune in to conversations where someone's talking about something we care about, like ourselves. If you've ever overheard someone talking about you to their friends, then tuned into their conversation to see what they're saying about you, you have experienced the cocktail party effect. And something similar happens when you see a movie or a show that's relevant for you. Maybe it features an actor you love or it's a genre you enjoy. You pay more attention to it because it's relevant to you. Netflix believes in personalization so much that it doesn't think of itself as having a single product. Instead, every user's version of Netflix is completely tailored to them. But there's 200 million versions of Netflix, one for every user. While you're binging that latest season of Bridgerton, Netflix algorithm is working away in the background, figuring out what you like. Are you more of a Tiger King or a Grand Budapest Hotel? Do you prefer watching Dwayne The Rock Johnson in a movie or Tina Fey? When there's enough data, Netflix can show you an experience that makes it easier and faster to find what you want to watch. The cocktail party effect, delivered by this incredibly powerful 
powerful recommendation algorithm helps Netflix do that, and it works. More than 80% of Netflix shows that customers watched in the last two years has been as a direct result of Netflix recommendation engine, not someone searching for a specific piece of content. Now that they've found the best content for you, how does Netflix get you to watch it? According to its own internal studies, Netflix believes it only has 90 seconds to catch your attention and get you to start watching. And the thumbnail is their key opportunity to do that. When they first started out, Netflix would use the general purpose images provided by movie studios. And many of these were just resized billboards, print ads, or DVD covers, not images created for a digital experience. But then Netflix began testing different elements of thumbnails to see if it could match the right audience to the right thumbnail. After thousands of experiments, the tech team developed three insights about what makes people click. First, faces that show emotions that align with the title. So a person screaming if the subject is horror or laughing if it's comedy will drive more clicks. Second, when a thumbnail shows a famous or polarizing character, it performs better. For example, showing the villain Voldemort's face would perform better than showing Harry Potter's face on a thumbnail because people either love Voldemort or really, really hate him. And last, different images do better in different parts of the world. That means artwork has to be customized depending on where a user is located. So that's our second lesson. You have limited time to grab a customer's attention. Use the cocktail party effect to show users the right content at the right time to drive action. Now let's stay on this question of how Netflix presents content in a way that makes you start watching and keep watching. When a user browses the Netflix homepage searching for something new to watch, they're actually evaluating risk. So if you're doing a little bit of Netflix and chill, the psychological risk is probably pretty high. But even if you're just eating pizza on the couch on a Friday night, you still don't don't want to risk ruining your night with a crappy movie. And when it comes to risky situations, one of the most persuasive psychological principles out there is called social proof. There are some other videos on the channel that go in depth about social proof, but basically the principle says when it comes to trying new things or taking a risk, we prefer to make sure other people are doing it first. And the more other people are trying something and liking it, the more we want to try it too. How does Netflix apply social proof? Well, there's lots of examples, but we're going to concentrate on two. Trending now and the top 10 sections. Netflix trending now category is a good example of social proof at work. Whatever reason they're trending, be it a new season or titles having a cultural moment, Moment, so think Tiger King in 2020, this section surfaces what's popular in your area. Netflix tech teams say that trending now is one of the few personalization features created in real time. So not only does it use social proof to get people to watch, but it can apply the cocktail party effect by being personalized based on context. Things like day of the week or even changes in the collective interests of its members. The team could put an Oscar winning movie in trending now the moment it wins an Oscar. The second place Netflix uses social proof is in its top 10 section. Top 10 lists drive traffic because they show what's popular in the area and exactly how popular a movie or TV show might be. The top 10 also has a bonus behavioral science principle at work, appropriately called the top 10 effect. It says that people naturally arrange things into round number groups and everything outside these groups is considered inferior. In other words, top 10 lists naturally grab people's attention and their interests. And that's our last lesson. We're all afraid to try new things because trying new things is risky. But you can use social proof to help users feel like everyone, except them, has seen this movie or show and they love it. That way, it won't feel so risky to click on a title and commit to watching it.